to Locked On Astros, your daily Astros podcast. Here are your hosts, Eric the Man Heisman and Brett H-Town Wheelhouse Chansey. We are Locked On Houston Astros and we are your daily Astros podcast. My name is H-Town Wheelhouse. You can find me on Twitter at H-Town Wheelhouse. You can find me um, on Twitter, I'm at Strohs411 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Always positive, always Strohs. And a returning favorite guest of ours, Mr. Kent Emanuel, pitcher for the Houston Astros. Kent, where can they find you on Twitter? At Kent Emanuel, Twitter and Instagram. It is so great to have you back, and I know you have been doing a lot of work. We've been following your your rehab assignment and just – what you've been doing, working to get strong, and we know that you were recently on another podcast with uh, Rob Rob Fontenot, and I'm sure that you've been spending time just getting everything together. And you know, tonight's podcast is brought to you by Spotify Green Room. And if you want to talk sports like I do right now, like I am right now with Mr. Manuel, you can do that in Spotify Green Room. You can download the app, join me at John Wheelhouse. You can join Eric the man Heisman at Eric Heisman. And you can you can join us during the week. We we are gonna do a probably a pregame green room on Saturday. So be looking for that alert. Download the app, follow us, follow MLB and check out all the action. So um, we did not get a podcast in last night. This week has been brutal for us because West Coast games are an absolute grind and we're teachers by day. And so what I want to hit on first is this game, um, kind of one of the subjects that was the overarching theme. Lance McCullers goes out, gives up, you know, he gives up, he gives up a couple runs. He only gives up a few hits. Um, The Astros offense just doesn't really show up. But one of the things he mentioned was um, he had, he he kind of said something about the umpires. He said, you know, it's really tough when the guys that aren't playing the game affect the game so greatly. On top of that, the offense wasn't sparking. I mean, they scored 10 runs in the, in the you know, previous two or three games before that. So as a pitcher, how how tough is that mentally when you know the offense isn't clicking and then you feel like the umpires aren't really giving you the calls and they really miss some zone calls. It wasn't it wasn't just here or there. It just seemed they were missing pitches in the zone. He wasn't getting them. As a pitcher, how do you fight through that mentally, inning by inning? Um. Well, as far as as far as the umpires go, at least for me personally, I've learned that uh, you always remember the ones that go against you. But and, and and if you get a call, you don't. It doesn't really stick. You don't really remember it. So. As I've gotten older, I think I've done a better job of of realizing that, like, oh, I just got that pitch. I should not have gotten that pitch. <laughs> it just kind of puts it kind of puts things into perspective. You don't get so flustered when you don't get a call. At least that's how it's been in my personal experience. But um, and as far as as far as the offense goes, kind of a similar thing. I mean, you're going to run into games where you you have an awful game and you're still going to get a win because our lineup's going to put up 20 runs. So. Um, so both of those things, it's like it, it can be very frustrating, but at the end of the, at the end of the day, you just got to know that you need to focus on controlling the things that that you can control. You know? Yeah, definitely. And um, there's gonna be a lot of, I guess, pitching centric questions. A, not just because you're a pitcher, but because these are the things that we are um, we are looking at right now, um, the biggest questions for the Houston Astros going into the playoffs is the bullpen, is what is the starting rotation going to be? Now, Zach Grinke is on the 10 DIL retroactive to, I believe, the 21st. Um, So what does that do to a potential ALDS run for him? You know, you got someone like Christian Javier, Kent, last year who was in the Rookie of the Year consideration. And he has been I don't want to say demoted. He's been moved to a different role in the relief mm-hmm. role. And he hasn't had as much success as he did as a starter. Mm-hmm. You see yourself as a starter. I know you came in and several relief appearance, your your big major league intro, your your big debut was 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 one of the best, I believe, in baseball history in what you accomplished. 
when you're a starter and you get moved to a relief pitcher, or you even take Belak where he has started, he's relieved, uh-huh. he's started, been up and down. How do you stay focused as a pitcher? How do you keep grinding day in and day out? And is it a it is is it a mental grind when you're going through all the changes that they're throwing at you rather than having one specific role? Right. Yeah. Um, no, it's definitely a challenge um, changing, you know, um, back and forth and, and roles evolving and and what have you. Um, I mean, but that's just that's just part of the game, man. You're in the big leagues, you know. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, it, it certainly is a challenge. And, and the more um, I don't know, I guess, heads up you get, the the more it helps. So so that's one of the things that's that could be challenging for this time of the year because you really don't know. I mean, like you just said, Granky's now on the IL. Like things change can change so fast, and the games are about to be very important. So it just adds some stress. But that's why it's playoff baseball, man. It's more. It means more. It's going to be more stressful in, in all sorts of ways. So, so with so with your rehab and with all the work that you're doing, do you do you keep up every day with the ball club? Is it something that you check in once a week because you're focused on you? I, yeah. I mean, what's that like for you personally? Uh, it it just depends. I definitely check the box scores every day, um, and depending, like when they're playing the Angels in Anaheim, I hardly watch any of that because I'm usually <laughs> in bed, but you know what I mean? I'm trying to go to sleep, but, um, but yeah, so it just depends. I definitely check the box scores every day. Um, I'll watch the games, um, or I'll, at the very least, I'll like throw it on my phone. If I'm doing something, you know, that's not that important. I'll have it sitting in my phone so I can kind of like keep checking in with whatever I'm doing and, and checking in on the game. So, um, so yeah, I keep up with it, uh, a moderate amount, not a, not a crazy time, but, but um, but yeah, I'm still in the loop. Yeah, that's good. Um, so so let's so let's do this. I know we're gonna I know we're gonna talk more in um, detail about it. But um, and just because I saw this blurb today, they're like spring training tickets go on sale this week, and I'm like, whoa, already? Like, wow. Um, with your rehab, your scheduling, are you are you on schedule to be? in spring training, ready to try to throw, like, where is your recovery time frame? If, if you can say that. Yeah. Um, no, I should be full go. I should be full going camp, knock on wood, fingers crossed, all that jazz. Don't want to jinx anything. Right. Um, Yeah, definitely. Obviously that's a ways away. So that could change, but, um, but you know, assuming all goes well, I should be full go in camp. That's awesome. And, you know, I think it's going to be it's going to be an exciting camp and it's it's going to be interesting because not only this postseason run, what the Astros do um, and then the offseason, the big question on everybody's mind, are the Astros going to resign Carlos Correa? If they don't, who are they going to put it short pitchers? Are they going to go get a frontline pitcher with all the money coming off the books? It seems like it's going to be a very active offseason for this Astros front office. Um, And before we go further into that, I want to ask you, is slow okay? Because for some people, slow is just right if you're on vacation or if you're a sloth or you're describing QuickBooks, more like slow books. It sucks you in and it makes you think and it slows you down with all these manual processes that integration difficulties and glitchy delays leave you scrambling for the numbers you need. But not anymore. Now is the time to make the switch to NetSuite by, by Oracle, the number one financial system because NetSuite gives you visibility, control of your finances, of your inventory, HR, e-commerce, and more. It's everything you need to grow all in one place. With NetSuite, you can automatic your you can automate your processes and close your books in no time, no matter how big your business grows. Um, failing to switch to NetSuite will leave you stuck trying to make sense of your books while your competitors sprint ahead. It'd be like if Ken Emanuel was was like trying to recover at, at the Jacksonville Jaguars camp. Like that wouldn't make sense, right? So mm-hmm. you're going to go to NetSuite. 93% of surveyed businesses increased their visibility and control since switching to NetSuite. And right now, special financing is back. NetSuite is offering one-of-a-kind financing program only for those reading uh, ready to switch today. Head to netsuite.com slash locked on right now. Get special financing at netsuite.com slash locked on netsuite. Um, that is dot com slash 
NetSuite slash locked on. So with that being said, um, Kent, for you, um, you you basically have made your home. Are you in the Palms right now? Are you in the Astros Florida facility? Where are you? Yeah, I'm I'm working out at the West Palm Beach facility right now. Um, I got a couple more weeks here, and then uh, and then we'll we'll go from there. But yeah, I'm playing I'm playing and I'm being here at least for a couple more weeks. So are you are you throwing are you throwing to anyone or is or are you just going through your progression, getting down your your mechanics, just you you know, but basically playing catch right now? Yeah, just started playing catch on Monday. Monday was my first day. Um, you know, a very exciting forty five feet. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, but yeah, throwing with the rehab coach uh, down here and and um and yeah it's been it's been good i've done uh through monday wednesday and uh today so it's all it's all been good so far now now with that to stay in tune to stay in shape are are you also kind of on a workout regimen where you weights and other things other parts of your body core oh, yeah, things like no, that yeah, legs i've been doing all of that for you know that was it wasn't too long after surgery before i started doing all that all the other stuff so um so yeah, the base, the baseball aspects, the the last throwing is the last piece of the puzzle when it comes to okay, you know, getting yourself ready to rock and roll. So I mean, so do you do you do you see yourself um, going out there competing for a starting position? I mean, there's gonna be. I mean, JV. I'm not gonna say he's not coming back, but. A lot of people don't feel like he'll re-sign with the Astros. Grinky's coming off the books. It's unlikely they'll sign him. They may have a couple spots in that rotation. Is that your ultimate big-time goal, like Ken Emanuel, number zero, on the mound, in the starting rotation? Or are you looking, you're like, I'm looking to contribute any way I can? Well, I mean, I, I do want to be a starter, certainly. Um, that's what I prefer to do, but... You know, like I've always said, I'd rather be in a big league bullpen than a triple A rotation. So if exactly that's what it comes down to, that's what it is. But yeah, I, I certainly hope that um, you know, I go into camp and and I can fight for one of those spots. Um that's answering that question is kind of above my pay grade. You gotta ask someone else those questions. Right. <laughs> well, yeah, um we're uh, we are we are uh, gonna be hopefully interviewing someone that's got a pretty big name with the ball club. I don't know that he'll answer my question directly on that because I don't know that he makes the decision. But yeah, it's just um and I remember you using that same quote. Um I think I, I think I may have repeated that question, so I do apologize for that. But you no, know, sorry. right now you know, that's okay. Um, you know, and when you're recovering, I'm sure you're into like nutrition and, and stuff like that and protein and making sure you're, you're getting all the right stuff. So Kent, I want to encourage you. If you haven't done this, I need you to check out something. I need you to check out Built Bar. Have you heard of Built Bar? Mm -mm. You haven't. Okay. Built Bar is the best tasting protein bar in the business. And I'm not just blowing smoke up your skirt. I'm not just making this up. Like if I could walk this computer over to my refrigerator, you would open it up and it would look like a Built Bar kingdom. I have so many flavors. My 13 year old son who plays AAU basketball actually loves Built Bars. Why? Because they're delicious. They're wrapped in 100% chocolate. They're good for you. They are even, they have 17 to 18 grams of protein, 130 to 180 calories, four to five grams of sugar, four to five grams of net carbs. I mean, they are amazing. They have they have this thing called grasshopper cookie. And if you like the thin mint cookies that the Girl Scouts sell, this is their take on it. They also have built puffs. They have, dude, it is crazy. The sky's the limit. It's the official protein bar of the USA track and field team. Why would you not want to put into your body what super athletes put into their body or super podcasters like myself and Eric, the man Heisman? So go to built.com and use a promo code LOCKS15. For the promo code LOCKED15 to Built.com, and you get the same 15% off discount that I get. And so that is super exciting to know. You know, Built Bar is awesome. Um, I want to I read off some, um, some uh, stats to you um, and talk to you a little bit about the bullpen because the bullpen has been something where it's been kind of up and down. Um, we've actually had a lot of success, but you know, bullpen guys kind of kind of get the short end of the stick when it comes to criticism because I think because they have 
such a small frame to work yeah. in, it's highlighted, right? It's kind of like a kicker. Like a kicker miss, misses two field goals. They're like, get him off the team. He's terrible. And he could have made 48 before that. A relief pitcher comes in like Matan came in the other night. And I, I, I think I may be. I think I maybe jumped the gun criticizing his outing. He had two or three really bad luck hits against him. And, of course, it goes against him, and it goes against his ERA. But sometimes baseball happens. So even the guys with the best stuff, stuff happens to you. But check out these stats. The Astros released this on their media page. Um, it says this, that the Astros bullpen, which tossed a scoreless two innings last night, has been a has been on a strong run since the club began their 17 game stretch without an off day, which is crazy. September 10th in the Astros 14 games since that date, the bullpen has posted a 2.01 ERA, 13 earned runs, and 58 point win innings pitch while going four and one with two saves. How important is a bullpen to a baseball team on a championship run? I mean, it's extremely important. Um... You know, especially with how, you know, important strikeouts seem to be nowadays. You know, I was just talking the other day about the extra inning rule, too. Like, you go to extras now, strikeouts are super important. Like, you got to have a guy go out there to strike someone out um, because, you know, you can – there's a man starting on second base. So, you can get everyone – you can get three guys out in a row and still give up that run. Um, mm, so, true. So, strikeouts are very important. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's – it's no coincidence every World Series team you, you see, chances are their bullpen's pretty stacked. So Exactly. And so from a pitcher's perspective, if you're going against the Houston Astros, and not just because you're a Houston Astro, but just put on your – I'm just a, I'm just a pitcher and I'm, and, a, and I'm going against these guys. Is mm-hmm. this not one of the most intimidating lineups that you've seen in a long time? Yeah, our lineup is – I don't think uh, – I don't think I'm – speaking off base even being a pitcher here that our lineup is certainly the probably the most feared part of our entire team i mean we got some studs and it does it just it doesn't seem to stop it's like you got a good hitter (laughs) next guy's up it's a good hitter (laughs) you know you look up on the big board and you see all the numbers you're like you know they're all comparable to the opposing opposing teams like three hole hitter it's like yeah, just a bunch, bunch of good players, man. It's a good team. It's not a coincidence. I, I mean, that, that they're going to win the division. You know, I mean, when you got Kyle Tucker batting seventh, that that guy's a three hole hitter minimum. Yeah. I mean, I mean Kyle Tucker, and 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 you know he he kind of got a bad rap when he first came up. Um, I think my voice cracked there. I'm 46. I don't know what's going on there. But um, he, when he came up, he kind of got a bad rap about. Oh, he looks. He doesn't like. He, he didn't have the energy and pizzazz that like Correa, Bregman, all those guys brought, right? And so, mm-hmm. and so people kind of took a bad read. And, and, and of course, as a hitter, you've got to adjust to major league pitching. But he has become, I think, and I now like MLB Networks, you know, previewing him. I mean, guys are taking notice. This yeah. guy's swing, when you're pitching against a guy that's a contact guy that hits everything 120 miles an hour off the bat, how do you attack a hitter like that? Do you just have to study a lot of film and go, I've got to find his one or two weaknesses and then attack those? Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's all, it all just depends. It depends on the type of pitcher you are. depends on the type of hitter you're facing. I mean, you don't want to, uh, you know, it's a balancing act of figuring out, hey, how much do I need to value this hitter's weaknesses versus my strengths? And, you know, it's – it's obviously if if that was so clear cut that we wouldn't really have a whole lot of uh, you know we wouldn't need coaches we wouldn't need you wouldn't see players careers evolve like it'd be just very robotic so I mean that's part of the game yeah for sure so so that's that's one of the challenges of of going out there and playing every day is like you gotta you gotta figure out you know what's my best uh, what gives me the best chance for success so. When I'm when I'm coaching young pitchers, okay, um, I hope that a lot of the coaching I've given has been good advice. It's probably not major league level Brent Strom or or you know Murphy advice, but I always tell them like your job is not to strike people out. Your job is to throw strikes. Is that is that how big league? pitchers ultimately after all the data after all the study after all the you know you got the card you got the calls you got martin maldonado you got castro you got all these guys giving you this stuff at the end of the day 
does it come down to the basics? You got to throw strikes. You got to get the ball in the zone. I mean, yeah, if you're not throwing strikes, you you can't really. It's hard to do anything. Um, I mean, you watch. You, I mean, especially nowadays, the the zone is so. I know recently that we've had some problems with the umpires, but the umpires are really good though overall, and hitters are incredibly good. I mean, it's you watch <laughs> you watch games and you see a guy get rung up on a three two pitch, and it's like a millimeter outside the zone, but the hitter knows it, and he's like, "That's outside," you know, and and he's right. <laughs> Technically, he's right. Like it was a good pitch, but he's right. It was a ball. And so, um, you know, with, with that, like being such a big part of the game now where they don't want hitters to chase, uh, yeah, you gotta, you gotta put it in the zone or else you're going to walk everybody. So I just saw today betonline.ag has the Astros 7.1%, 17.1% to win the world series. They have the highest percentage. So I'm going to tell you about betonline.ag because, Kent, it is football season, too. We're back and better than ever. All eyes are on the gridiron. And as teams are back to start another football season, as always, BetOnline is your number one spot for all your pro and college football action this season. With all the, with this new updated site and interface, it's amazing. I've actually checked it out. It's really cool. Even more odds, more props, more contests. BetOnline.ag continues to be the number one source for everything football. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today to receive your 100% welcome bonus. That's double your deposit just for signing up. Don't forget to use the promo code NFL100. From football, basketball, boxing, baseball to your favorite Vegas casino games, don't wait to take advantage of the amazing offers available in the 2021 season. Don't act like going to Dave & Buster's is your kitty casino, guys. Go to the big man's place. Bet online, the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your sports. Bet online, your online sportsbook experts. Use the promo code locked on. Um, this is an exciting year, Kent. The run that this team is on, they have won so many games. And the amount of games that they've won, even in September, they've actually won the most games in September since 2015, I believe than any other ball club. They had the highest winning percentage in September, like five, six, or it's, it's insane. Right. Um, as, as players grinding day in and day out, when you get to this point of the season, what is your focus when you know you have something locked up? How, how, how do you think as a, as a pro, these guys stay motivated to just keep playing and keep grinding? Um, I mean, well, I think it's I think it's rare that you get an extremely long stretch where it's all locked up. You know, you're still you're still playing <clears throat> meaningful baseball usually, even if you're in first place. I mean, even like look at the Astros now. There's it's still not Clint. Like it's still possible that they don't win, right? That they don't win the division. It's still mathematically possible. So so I mean it, it's it's not like it's a whole uh it's not like it's a very long time that teams have to deal with that where they've basically locked in their spot and now you got to finish the season but but guys are competitors man everyone that's out there wants to compete no one wants to do poorly you know and right. you know if you if you if the game doesn't matter in terms of a division race but you hit four homers guess what that's still four homers going on at your end of the season tally so so guys still want to perform no question about it yeah exactly so you know you know, going to those specific numbers, September success, the Astros are 13 and eight. Um, and I, actually since 2017, the Astros combined record is 83 and 45. That's 648. And so from 2017 to 2021, I mean, a 648 winning percentage behind them is the Dodgers and behind them is the Brewers. And so um, this is really when you start talking about baseball dynasties, now I know you probably talk to some of the guys that are on the field day in and day out, and they they probably don't want to use the word dynasty. They don't, you know, that's that's more of a fan or commentator thing. Mm-hmm. But what they built and Kent going forward after your rehab and getting back with the team and contributing with the team, I see this team having a good four or five more solid years of being one of the top four teams in the major leagues. And for you as a player, um, does that mean more to you that you know that you're a part of a club that has a viable option to be a playoff contender for the next few years? Does that add just a little more excitement, a little more motivation once you get out there in spring training? 
Um, yeah, sure. Yeah, every everyone. I don't think anyone wants to be on a bad team. Um, right. Uh, every, in, <laughs> you mean yeah, you mean there, you mean you don't want to play for the Orioles? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I feel like I feel like everyone wants to uh, obviously play in the playoffs, and and like you said, it, the teams just kind of kind of stuck their foot in the ground, and it's kind of an expectation now, which I think. For the most part, with the makeup of our clubhouse, they really like that. We like having the high expectations. We like kind of having that, like that, that uh, like target to hit. So, so I think it's a great thing. Obviously, yeah, for sure, for sure. The only time it's is not great is I hate to say it. It's for the double A and triple A guys, man. That, that's that's when it's that's when it's that's when you're like, man, why, why can't you lose a hundred games so I can get called up right. and then we can win a hundred games, you know? So. Um, but yeah, but yeah. If you're if you're with the team, obviously you want to be, you want to be going to the playoffs. You want to be on the best team you can be on. Yeah, definitely. And you know, speaking of that, man, they have been making moves. Double A AA and Triple A guys. A lot of position players have been making moves. Um, I know that Pete Solomon has has been getting um, opportunities, but guys like Jeremy Pena. I don't know if you saw what he did the other day. You know, four for five with three home runs, and then he added a double and a home run. I think last night Corey Lee went two for five, an aspiring catcher coming up through the Astros system, and mm-hmm. so it doesn't seem like there's any quit with this team between you coming back, between these minor leaguers coming up vying for position, position players. I mean, to me, the future is bright. That I think the competition needs to be wearing sunglasses all the time. They need to be wearing shades because this club and you know from my conversations with you from my conversations with jake myers with pete solomon when he was with round rock you you guys all say the same thing you tout the organization for their preparedness that they have you 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 tout the the coaches for the way they present information to you and then they you also tout how they prepare you physically and mentally and I, I don't see how there's any other team that anyone would want to be a fan of other than the Houston Astros. No, I mean, it's top, top of the line. It's not, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's not a coincidence. The team's good. I'll just say it. I'll just put it as simple as I can. It's not a coincidence that, that the team is good. So yeah, you're right. And you know, you, I've noticed, um, I, I watch on Twitter. I see people interact with you and you've done some cool things on Twitter. You've given away some things, signed baseballs, sign, you know, I think mm-hmm. that's really cool. And, and, um, when, when, when we have social media and there's so much negativity on social media, but then we have positive content like that. I think that goes a long way for the game. I think that goes a long way for this, for this ball club. And I just wanted to commend you and just tell you that I think that's really cool because I can't imagine growing up and being able to talk to my modern day hero. Um, just to share a little story with you, the way that I connected with players was I literally had to write a letter, mail mm-hmm. it to the stadium and hope yeah. to get something back, right? Yeah, that, no, it still goes on. It still goes on, um, certainly. And it's and it can be. It's just it's a lot more difficult and time consuming. So it's it's harder for guys to do that. Like it's a yeah. lot easier if, if we happen to see something on our phone and you can reply instantly than open up all the letters, like filter out right. whichever ones like you don't want to like even deal with whichever ones you feel like are kind of like sketchy get rid of those too right and, right like, you know, like it, <laughs> yeah like the a, obsessive it's a, letters it's a, lot, it's, a lot, it's a lot longer process if you want to like interact to do it that way so so yeah i mean that's just it's just one of the cool things about technology it let's it let's uh it gives guys the opportunity to do things like that pretty easily yeah so you know right before um i share my story with you uh, it looks like texas strong goes hey send my boy a cleat <laughs> But here's the thing. Does this sound familiar to you? You got one device that lets you catch all the game live, another that lets you stream your favorite shows. You're watching sports highlights on your phone. You've got your neighbor's best friends log in for the good stuff. Well, I want to tell you about a simple way to get all your entertainment you love without the hassle and a great way to finally get your TV together. It's called Direct TV Stream, and it brings you live TV and on-demand favorites together like never before. So you can watch your favorite sports, movies, shows all in one place. That means no more judging remote. No more juggling remotes and no need to buy another device ever again. And the best part is there's no annual contract. So, Kent, you need to get rid of the clutter. You need to get rid of the confusion and get your TV together with DirecTV Stream. You can learn more about DirecTV.com. That's DirecTV.com. Compatible device required. Content varies by package. So just just to, um, just to um, share with you, um, 
when I was growing up, I wanted to get Tim Raines autograph. Tim Raines played for an American League team at the time, and I the only American League ball team ball club that I was able to watch growing up was the Oakland A's because my dad would drive up to to Arlington every year. I was a big Bass Brothers fan, so I could watch McGuire and Canseco and all those guys mm-hmm. compete. I sent a letter to Mark McGuire, who was still my all time favorite player, and I actually cover up my McGuire signed jersey with the Houston so people don't give me grief about Cardinal <laughs> stuff in the background. But I got that signed. That jersey got signed in 1998 in the Astrodome when he was chasing the home run record. Um, so that's okay. so that's yeah, so that's cool. I've I've got a ton of cool stuff. I'll have to I'll have to show off my swag sometime in some DMs. I'll send you pictures <laughs> of my I've got a Ted Williams ball. I've got a ball signed by King Griffey Jr. and King Griffey Sr. Wow. Um, I've I've got Stan Musial. I mean Joe DiMaggio, I've got a bunch of stuff. Anyways, I digress. So I send to Mark McGuire and Tim Raines at the same time. Mark McGuire sends me back a black and white facsimile signed picture. I was a little crushed, to be honest. I was glad I got something, but he kept my he kept my rookie card. That's okay. I had I had doubles. Tim Raines sent back a letter, and I don't know what I did with the letter, but I have the card and he signed it. And it was nice. really cool. And yeah. so that was so that was a neat, meaningful thing. And I, I think I got giddy one time. Um, I made a graphic of Jordan and put it on Instagram and he liked it. And I was like, hey, Jordan yeah. liked my, you know. Yeah. yeah, I'm like, hold on. I'm a grown man here. I'm like twice this guy's <laughs> age. What am I doing? So it is, you know, it is it is fun and it's and it's and it's just great to see someone like yourself. Um, I mean, especially where you could be like, look, I'm doing rehab, I'm focused, I'm 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 trying to get back and you know, but you're still a regular dude and 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 interacting with the fans and I've seen a lot of positive feedback about you. People talk highly of you. So man, whatever it is you're doing, just keep up uh, keep it's keep not, doing it's that. Not important enough yet, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. That's how it yeah. works. <laughs> right, right, right. No but um, you know the guy that's not established yet. So. Exact. Well, you know, but but you know, here's the deal though. I think I think with what you did and came in um, especially with your backstory and how you came back and what you've gone through to me, I see you doing well. Um, I see success in your future because you obviously are a hard worker and, and I believe that hard work and the mindset that you have is irreplaceable and intangible. And, and I know when I coach young athletes, I want to see that. Um, and so well, I just, yeah, I, too. yeah, man. And, and honestly, I don't say things like that unless I mean them. And I'm not just saying that because it's because it's Kent. I'm trying to get in good with with Mr. Emmanuel. But you know, we do um, we do appreciate you like hanging out with us on the show. So I'm I'm gonna throw something at you, and you uh-huh. can say I don't want to answer it, or I do want to answer it. All right. Do you see the Astros making the World Series this year? Yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna not say yes. What do you mean? <laughs> What do you mean? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, so do you see them winning the World Series? Yeah, they're going to win the World Series. Yes, the yes. World Series. Kent is all in. You hear that, guys, yeah. out in Oakland? Yeah. Kent's behind you 100%, just like H-Town yeah. Wheelhouse. 100%. Uh, yeah, definitely. Now, do you th- – so this is this is something I kind of want to wrap up on because I think it's interesting. There are three storylines that could play out in the playoffs. One, the Astros could face the Giants. The Giants, Dusty Baker's former club, who he did not win a World Series with. Imagine the Astros clinching a World Series in San Francisco with Dusty as the manager. I think would be poetic justice. The Brewers, who are Ben Verlander's pick to win the National League, kind of because Bud Selig's daughter was in the Brewers' front office, they were like, Astros, you're going to the AL, not the Brewers. She's like, Daddy, I don't want to go to the AL, so make the Astros go. So, Jim Crane, you want to buy the Astros? you got to move the AL. So, there's a little tension there. And Mm -hmm. then the lost again, I mean, Los Angeles Dodgers. The Dodgers who seem to be hung up on 2017. I mean, the Astros have three potential storylines, and that's got to be great for baseball, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, I I don't think – you know, I, I don't know how much national attention the first two would get, but certainly if it was Dodgers Astros, hundred percent, hundred percent. Oh um, yeah. So, so yeah. I mean, I, I don't know if there's gonna be. I mean, I, that goes for the Yankees too. 
Like if they if the Astros mm. have to play the Yankees in the playoffs, that's going to be a big one too. So I don't I don't know. I think I think uh, I, just the way that the last few years have gone and with the team being so good and and all that, it's just it doesn't really matter who you play. It's going to be um, it's going to be fun. You know, it, because I've been saying in the AL, I'm really concerned about playing the Blue Jays in the ALCS because, like, in a way. Like a, a road game for Springer might feel like a home game. And he's Mr. October, and I don't want to face that. But yeah. the Blue Jays have suddenly started losing, and the Yankees are back in it. And I'm like, guys, the goal is to keep the Yankees out. <laughs> <laughs> That's the goal. I'll tell you like, what. I'll tell you what that, the, both of those uh, teams, man, that Blue Jays lineup's sneaky. I don't think they get brutal. enough credit. I really don't think they get enough credit. They are really, really good. And so – I don't know. Who knows what's going to happen? That's September baseball, man. We'll see how how the race shakes out. Exactly. You know, and for me, it's the '90s All Star Sons of you know team. I mean, the <laughs> Bichette and the Vlad Guerrero. You know, yeah, I mean, just you know, Gavin. Yeah, man. It's even Guriel. Yeah, man, Guriel. <laughs> I mean, I mean, that's the thing. And and so, um, so at the end of the day, the bottom line is this: I believe in my heart of hearts that baseball is the greatest sport. On the planet now, I know if everybody liked baseball, the world would be boring. But um, <laughs> you know, but I think to be able to talk to you, a major league pitcher, for me is definitely always a pleasure and an honor. And you being candid and coming on, talking to our fans, and maybe you and I can discuss something. Maybe we can we can figure out some kind of giveaway. We're actually I'm going to announce tonight we're giving away a four pack of passes to the Houston Open was given to us. It's a it's a PGA golf golf tour event. Um, one of our one of our loyal listeners is a season ticket holder and we're giving away a pass for four passes, like four adult passes. You get to go all four days, I believe, to this tournament. And I'm going to be releasing details this week on Twitter of how to get signed up for the contest. You'll have to be bringing more subscribers to us, but we want to give that to y'all. And next week, we have more tickets to give away during the week. Um, we, we went in, we got two tickets to every home game remaining here in September. So Eric and I went out and did that. So we'll be giving that nice. away. And you and I can talk about another giveaway off the air. I don't want to pigeonhole you on something, but Kent, thank you, <laughs> okay. thank you for joining us. Tell us again where the people can find you. Uh, at Ken Emanuel, uh, Twitter and Instagram. Awesome, thank you so much. And you know, here's the thing: betting on the Houston Astros doesn't have to be a guessing game. If you listen to the new Locked On Bets podcast, hosted by your boy Q and handicapping expert Lee Sterling, get daily picks, blowout specials, wrong team favorite picks, and Lee Sterling's lock of the day. Follow the Locked On Bets podcast brought to you by BetOnline.ag wherever you get your podcast. They're like at a 64 percent winning rate right now. They're crushing it. So go there. Keep up with Mr. Ken Emanuel. Follow him on Instagram. Follow him on Twitter. And once again, I'm H-Town Wheelhouse from the only Daily Astros podcast and with the coolest pitcher in the land. I can't even point right. Uh, Kent Emanuel, thank you so much. Y'all have a good one. And go Astros. Oh. <laughs> and go Astros.